Hello there, thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard. And yep, you've heard me crow before about Beatle concert posters on this video blog, but man, this has to be one of my three favorite Beatles vintage concert posters in existence. And maybe yours too, take a look at it. Wow, right? The spring of 1963, what a masterpiece, just as the Fab Four was on a rocket ship to Mars, at least in the UK, not quite yet in America or the rest of the world. But just look at this poster. It's huge, it's colorful, it's rare, it's got their photo on it, which is not common for early English concert posters, and my favorite part, their first two number one singles are listed right there on the poster. Wow, please please me, and from me to you. Wow, gosh. You know, the Beatles' popularity was just expanding exponentially right now. Every month of 1963 just saw them growing explosively. It's just crazy. Whereas, of course, in America, they blew up all at once with the Ed Sullivan Show. A couple of other big hit acts on this poster are nice, too. You've got Jerry and the Pacemakers. They had three number one hits in 1963, this very year. How Do You Do It, their current hit, I Like It, and You'll Never Walk Alone. Uh, those first two records, by the way, were hits in America the following year, once the Beatles opened the gates of the British invasion, the floodgates. And then the bottom of the poster, look at that, Roy Orbison, and it says, from the United States, wow, with four top ten hit singles listed, and those were hits in the top ten on both sides of the pond. So, boy, the poster has a lot of star power besides the Beatles. And then you've got those six acts, which, uh, you know, history doesn't remember half a century later, um, but they comprise just, you know, the right amount of space right through the middle of the poster without any pictures to distract us from the hit acts. And so, you know, hope that doesn't sound mean, but it all lends itself to the nice layout for this brilliant concert poster. And uh, you might notice the top eight acts, including the Beatles, are sort of, you know, listed in willy-nilly fashion a bit, you know, with their rectangles tilted every which way. But then Orbison gets this big straight anchor across the bottom of the poster because he was presumed to be the headliner when the tour was being put together. And you've got five colors on this beauty. Red, blue, yellow, black, and white. Can't forget, like, white and black. They're important colors. And so it just all really, really works together nicely. Wow. <sighs> okay. <laughs> well, let's take on this monster from the top, as I so often do. As you can see right up there in the box, the venue box, which changed from stop to stop, of course. You've got the Rialto Theatre in York, England, of course. And uh, yes, this um, was midway through the tour, which uh, lasted a few weeks. And uh, York being in England, I'll show you a couple of other examples of how this tour blank was used later in the video. Then right under Rialto Theatre, you've got, as was commonly done back then, the general manager DJ McAllen, Mecca Casino. <laughs> and uh, under York, the, is five, the, or the theater's five-digit phone number. Wednesday, the 29th of May, at 6.40 and 8.45. Doesn't say p.m., but everybody knows that shows we're not in the morning. And of course, no year given, because we have to remember this thing was, you know, boy, what was it, you know, printed in April and discarded, thrown away in June, most of them. So who needed the year on there, right? And then also still up at the top there in the upper left corner, you've got on the stage, and the upper right corner, you've got one day only. So you'd sort of think that's the end of the changing information, right? Uh, the day-to-day -day stuff, but um, I just want to point out there, right above the Beatles picture in the upper left corner there in that area, uh, the promoter credit could and did change as well. So um, to prove that point, and as well as the venue box, let's take a look at uh, this poster from one week earlier, also Wednesday, but on the 22nd of May. So here by photographic representation, you've got the Galmont Theatre in Ipswich, England, and the theatre manager and phone number also on there in small print. And Wednesday, 22nd of May, 6.35 and 8.45 p.m. Interesting, the first show starting five minutes earlier <laughs> than in New York. But as you'll see from other examples, those times can really change around a lot. And then you've got that 13-word promoter credit up there above the Beatles picture. And uh, the, it, it's the same 13 words as on the York poster, but the words are shuffled around and in a different order. 
For example, right here it starts off with Peter Walsh in association with and then a week later in York, right above my finger there, it says Peter Walsh and Kennedy Street Enterprises Limited in association with Tito Burns presents. So granted that's a subtle difference, but still worth noting. So then the talent portion begins on this poster, which definitely did stay constant through the whole tour. Boy, you've got the Beatles on there in big white letters, and interestingly, white was used very sparingly on this poster, just for the names of three musicians and sort of the background for two of the headshots, as well as the outer border. How fresh were the Beatles on the scene? Well, <laughs> the month before this, they played their final show at the Cavern Club. Wow, hello, so that's pretty new. Uh, they had released three singles so far, and now one album, and of course you know them, Love Me Do went to just number 17, Please Please Me number one in New Musical Express, not across the board, and From Me To You was number one absolutely everywhere. And blessedly those two number ones are <laughs> right here on the poster, thank goodness, and of course you've seen them, they're right up there in the upper right portion of the Beatles' red rectangle. Boy, that just, for me, just um, makes the poster, of course, so do so many other elements. Boy. Then you've got the great picture of the Beatles, and, uh, you know, I believe that's the Mersey River in the background, and, you know, made famous by Jerry and the Pacemakers' ferry across the Mersey. And, uh, you know, the Fab's expressions are great. And, you know, to me, this, this single photograph, I'll get it a little bit closer for you on it, this single photo is just for my money, so much better than four floating heads, which were so commonly used. But it's very key to point that the handbills and the much smaller window cards used for this very tour did use the floating heads. Let me show you. So here's an image of the smaller poster from the opening date on this tour, 11 days prior to the York poster. In fact, notice the string at the top there, which held up this uh, little window card. And there they are, four blue and white heads, uh, just floating along there with only Ringo smiling. Now, you know, that's not bad, that's not terrible, but... I personally think this one just knocks it out of the park, this particular photo. You know, for a posed, essentially, headshot photograph, it just has sort of action and dynamics to it. I love the expressions on all four guys. And to me, the background is really crucial. I mean, you know, what says Liverpool better than down at the docks, right?